Winding up extension cords or hoses can be an absolute mess, especially when they get tangled and have knots and all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna show you a couple of easy ways to work with these. Now, what I learned when I was younger, and this is how I had done it for most of my younger life, was you put it in your hand and you wrap it around your elbow like this, and on you go. So you do that and then you plug these together, but then what happens is you go to use the thing and you see, if I throw it out here, for example. So as I come to bring this out, I'm bringing chunks of cord like this, and hopefully they eventually work themselves out. And then this thing just stays in a big knot and just doesn't want to, doesn't want to work. I end up with this. When I was in college, I was taking some classes that taught me what these key grips used when they were wrapping up their audio and video cables on set. This works for concerts as well, where you have these huge spools of wire and you need to feed it to the musician or you need to follow around the camera and you don't want everything to get tangled up. So the over under technique is pretty simple. The idea is you do one of the first loops over, for example, like this. So I'm using my dominant hand to do the wrapping, my non-dominant hand as a shelf, a holder here. So I've got one, just a regular loop, but the next one I'm gonna go under. So I'm actually bringing this one and I'm twisting my wrist under, so your forearm is underneath the loop. So I do it like that, and then I pull it out and let it hang, grab another arm length, and then I'm gonna put this next one over, like this one, just a, a regular one. Next one again, it's gonna go under. So you see, I kind of do a little, a little toss like this to get my loop going, and I end up with my forearm under. I hook it onto my left hand, my non-dominant hand, and then pull out, and then grab my over. Now, if need be, I can feel the twist in this, so I can twist it, or untwist it really, to get it nice and straight. That's really what we're going after here, is to make sure that none of these are twisted up and having these little kinks or bends or bows in them. So that was an over, so I'm gonna go to an under now like that, and then an over. And again, on that one, I had to twist it. I felt like I could feel that if I go like this, see what it's doing? It's fighting me on that. So I wanna relax the cord as best I can. And in this case, what I need to do is twist it this way because it was about 180 degrees twisted the wrong direction. Now I can grab my next one and go under, over, under, over, and so on. So on that one, I need a little twist on there, so I'm gonna go like that, then like this, and so on. Now, when I'm done, I've got a couple of things going on. One, I like to always keep these little Velcro twisty ties on here, and they're just it's just a Velcro strap that's got hooks on one side, loops on the other, and then I can wrap it up, and then tie it off like that. So this thing's ready to hang up, throw in the back of your truck, whatever you need to do. Ideally, you wanna keep one side to where it left off. So I ended off with the female side in the front and the male side in the back here. So I wanna make sure I keep those in order as best I can, and that's what your twisty tie here will do, your Velcro. So now, if I want go to use this on a job site or somewhere else in the house, then I'm gonna just twist this off like this, the Velcro, and just leave it on the cord. Then I can leave, I can take this part, for example, let's say I've got it plugged in over here, Check this out. I can set that down, and as I walk away from this, it's going to unloop itself pretty much perfectly every time. Just nice and flat, no twists, no kinks, no problems. Look at that. Would you look at that? Now to show that in more of a real time, here's what this is gonna look like. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and I'm kind of feeling this out as I go to make sure that there's no twists or loops in there. But the cool part is once you do it once, unless something tangles it outside of what you're, you know, your wrapping process, it's gonna kind of stay in place. And there we go. The other cool part is check this out. If I grab both ends and toss this, it's not gonna be tangled at all. Look at that. I mean, just get a look at that. Just lays out nice and flat, just like we want it no issues. When you're working with a hose, the over-under technique is the ideal way to go. So I'm going to start with one end, wrap it like this. Now this one, I don't even remember how this was wrapped up last time, so we're going to just kind of handle it as it comes. So far, so good. This one, you have to really keep an open hand here, especially if it's a longer hose. I believe this is a 50-footer at least, and then sit it on top like that. So you might need to stack it a little bit for a hose just to give yourself enough room to hold it. So that was an under, so I'm gonna twist it so I can do the next over, and then 
grab my next under. So you kind of have to wrangle it a little bit if it hasn't been done properly in the past. There we go. So I'm just gonna keep wrapping it around like this. Almost done. I'm running out of hands. All right. And then our last over. So now we've got a nice coil here and the cool part is this coil is gonna be so easy to work with. Now, as I unwind this, this thing's just gonna come totally free, nice and easy with no issues. And I can take as much of this as I want and it's just gonna come right out just the way we want it the entire time. All the way down to the end. So that's why the over under technique is the perfect technique to use for hoses. The second technique that is totally different from the first one and it kind of looks like a mess but works really well. I call it the chain technique and it works also really well but for a different purpose. You wouldn't use this with a hose but for an extension cord, this works super well. Again, we've got a 50 foot cord here. I just did this with a 100 foot cord. It works great. But what I'll do is I'm gonna start by taking the two ends and then plugging them into each other. And then I'm gonna follow it along, whoops, kind of fist over fist here until I get to the end, the halfway point right here. Once we've got our halfway mark like this, we're just gonna take that loop that we created and I'll call this part over here the tail. We're gonna feed the tail up through the loop and then we end up with the tail again and then our loop. So I'm gonna feed the tail through the loop and I'm gonna keep these into fairly small sections like this. And all I'm doing is every time I make a new loop, I end up with a new tail and I put that through it like so. And I just keep those, oops, keep those tail pieces together and it's kind of twisting in my hands, that's okay. And then just keep feeding it through like this. So just to kind of show this real slow, I've got the one in my hand, I've got the bottom tail piece and I'm just gonna push it through and make that loop, which creates a new loop on top over and over until I get to the end. Now, when I get to the end like this, I can either store it like this and then I've just got my chain right here and that works out great. This is really durable. In fact, I can take this thing and wad it up. I can toss it onto the ground, put it under the seat, whatever you need. And then you just grab the female and male ends here and you're good to go. Now the cool part is you don't need to unravel the whole thing to use it. Let's say I have a 10 or 15 foot uh, span I need to run. I can then just pull these through both ends, pull it through once and then watch what happens. So as I start to go through here, it's going to untangle itself and I can release as much as I want or as little as I want. Let's say I just need this much. So I'm gonna leave this chain part intact and then run this way one way and this one the other way and I'm good to go. Then I don't have to redo the whole thing. In fact, let me plug these back into each other because I like doing that. It also protects the prongs on here from getting stepped on. Then you remember I ended up with this here. So I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. Loop it through loop it through, loop it through, and then I'm done. And then I've got it ready to go for next time. And if you need to, you can, in fact, just undo the entire thing just by pulling on it like this. So it will all come all the way done, right down to the end. Nothing's tangled up and you're ready to go for next time. So that's another way you can keep things totally tidy and in order and avoid undoing too much getting twists and knots and tangles and all those things that plague us with extension cords, audio cables, hoses, and everything else. I don't recommend the chain method for hoses because they're usually not quite as pliable as an extension cord, an HDMI cable, that sort of thing. So keep that in mind. But hopefully you found this helpful. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.